Glenn, we're here for Feed Yourself Lesson 3, uh, the devotional method. Let's just open up in a word of prayer here before we get started. Father, I just want to thank you for this wonderful day you've made and your love and your grace. And we thank you for this opportunity of looking into your word. Just open our eyes and our minds into how to study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so Psalm uh, 104 uh, verse 34 says, May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. So the first method that we're going to study is called the devotional method. It's called the devotional method because we're meditating on the Word of God to receive daily inspiration. Our goal here is not a deep Bible study. We'll learn how to do that in later lessons. But right now we want to hear God speak to us gently through his Word. It's the still small voice that guides, motivates, and strengthens us as we move through life. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And Psalm 37.7 says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. We live in a world that's full of noise. Many people are afraid of silence, afraid to be alone with themselves. Even Christians fill their days with TV, with music, with visiting, none of which is wrong in itself. But if it's an escape from being alone with God, then it becomes wrong. How many people could sit for just five minutes in silence without getting bored? Maybe if you're a hunter or a fisherman, you're used to doing things like that. But more and more, people clutter their lives with noise, with activity. Entertain me. Don't let me be bored. And above all, don't let me be alone in silence. That's the cry of the modern man. I don't want to be with myself. Let me be with somebody. Let my mind be occupied. But when we're looking at the devotional method, we want that silence. We want to be able to hear the word of God, the voice of God. The devotional method is the foundational method of Bible study. The other ways of Bible study all use the devotional method to some extent. So that's why we start with that, because we'll be using it later on as well. In the devotional method, you select a portion of scripture to read. Often, out of that portion, you choose one verse and meditate on it, allowing God to speak to you through it. Now I know because of false Eastern religions, the word meditation can be often misunderstood. But meditating on scripture really is just spending time thinking about it, thinking about a specific verse or a selection of verses or even a topic. Thinking carefully about every word. Consider the sentence or sentences. What is it saying? What does it mean? How does it apply to your life? The secret of meditation is that little four letter word that we looked at last week, time. Think about the verse over and over again. Look at it repeatedly from every angle you can. Now, you, now in meditating with the devotional method, we're going to use the four R's. The first R is reading. Read through your scripture selection carefully and thoughtfully. If possible, read it out loud as this will involve more of your senses. Look around at the context. Be a scientist. Be an explorer. Don't miss a thing. As you're reading, emphasize different words to bring out more meaning. For example, in Psalm 23, a very famous uh, section of scripture, we can say, The Lord is my shepherd, or the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Or the Lord is my shepherd. And in some cases, you can also put your name into the verse. In this example, it would, I could say, the Lord is Glenn's shepherd. And suddenly it becomes personal to me. A lot more, jumps out a lot more than just saying my. And notice with each emphasized word, a different meaning is brought to the front. They were all there to begin with, but we've shone a spotlight on each word. For example, when we said, the Lord is my shepherd, we're emphasizing that, is, that he is not a Lord. He is the Lord of the universe, the Lord of my life. When we say the Lord is my shepherd, we're focusing on the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He's not the great suggestion maker. He is the absolute Lord of our life. When we say the Lord is my shepherd, we're thinking about the present. The Lord is my Lord right now. He's my shepherd right now. 
Not in the past, not in the future, although both of those are true. But he, right at this moment in, in time, the Lord is my shepherd. And so with each word, emphasizing it and, and drawing out the meaning of how that word applies to me and in that sentence. Now, so the first thing is reading. The second is, R is reflecting. Spend time throughout the day thinking about what you have read. It can be while you're driving, while you're working, depending on what you do for a job, of course. If you're a brain surgeon, that's probably not the best thing to do. But there are many jobs that don't require our full mental abilities. Um, so depending on your job, you can think about it there. You can think about it while you're playing. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal His truth to you. Consider why the writer wrote the, wrote the way he did. Why did he choose one word or expression over another? Why did he say it the way he did? What was his purpose? What does it mean to your life? Be curious. Ask as many of the following questions as you can. What? Where? Why? How? Who? You want to examine that scripture from every angle that you can. Now this works very good if you're a morning person. You get up in the morning, you have your devotions, you can think about the scriptures throughout the day. But even if your devotion time is at night, you can go to bed thinking about the scripture. And then when you wake up in the morning, just refresh your memory with it and go on throughout the day thinking about it as you can. Um, uh, and don't be afraid to ask questions as you do your reading. Write them down. You may not know the answers. You may never know the answers. But it keeps your mind active and thinking about the scripture that you're talking about or, or studying. And you'll discover more answers than if you never ask the questions. That may seem obvious, but <laughs> it's, it's the truth. Um, for example, I was reading the other day Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, and it says in that verse, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants. Now we know that Jesus is God. He has all the attributes of God, fully God, fully man. So my question was, why did God the Father have to reveal this to Jesus to pass on to his servants? Didn't Jesus already know that? Now, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe I'll never figure out the answer to that. But write it down. Think about it. It may come as you're studying further things. It may not. But it's actively engaging your mind in what you're reading. So, number one, reading. Number two, reflecting. Number three, as we've already mentioned a little bit, recording. Spend some time to write down what you've observed in your verse or your reading selection. What is it about? What words jump out at you? What do they mean to your life? You might want to rewrite or paraphrase the verse in your own words. If you've chosen more than one verse, what's the key verse? And we'll look at finding the key verse and some of those things in later lessons. But write down what you're discovering. Now you might want to write it down in paragraphs or you might just want to write it down in outline form. Whatever suits you. It's your study. You develop the, the style and the method that's going to best refresh your memory and best uh, work with your style. It's just like keeping a Bible journal or a Bible diary on uh, what you're reading and what you're reflecting upon. And this diary or journal can be very encouraging as you look back at it in later years. Or even as you're going through a discouraging time, it can remind you how God has spoken to you and realize that God will speak to you yet again in the future. We all go through those desert dry experiences, but having a diary that we can look back on, it can be a stream in those deserts. So, number one, reading. Number two, reflecting. Number three, recording. Number four, responding. Information alone is not the purpose of Bible study. We must do something with what we're learning. Our lives must change. We must be a channel, not a dam. Did God bring a sin to mind that needs to be confessed and forsaken? Is God calling us to a new level of obedience and faith? Is there a promise we can claim? Is there an example we can follow? Is there something we can pray about? Can we draw strength or encouragement from it? In short, how does this scripture affect us personally today? Remember that Bible study is not just about gaining knowledge. It's about knowing Jesus and changing our lives. The Pharisees had an outstanding knowledge of the Old Testament. But if you read through the Gospels, Jesus did not have very good things to say about them. Why? Because they always wanted to apply their knowledge to somebody else. They never wanted to apply it to themselves. 
So when we're doing Bible study, our question is, what do we do with what we know? How is it going to impact our lives? Choosing to live in ignorance is not a realistic option. For God recognizes when we're evading responsibility, and he will hold us accountable for the things that we could have known, as well as the things that we do know. So, use these four steps in your devotional study. Reading, reflecting, recording, and responding. And as you practice them, they will become second nature to you. You'll find yourself automatically asking questions, drawing information out, and applying it. And relax. Have a good time. This isn't something to get uptight about. You're, you're studying and learning to draw closer to Jesus and to increase your knowledge. So have fun with it. Relax. So the project for this week coming up. The first thing, I designed a devotional chart, and you should have the link for it in your student notes if you downloaded them or you got them by email. Um, you can look over it. You can print it out. If you have a better way of doing it, fine, use that. Again, this is your study, so you have to find what's going to work best for you. It's just an idea and a guideline. And your, pro your project also this week is to do a devotional reading on Psalm 23. Now, you may say, I know Psalm 23. I memorized it. But if you do this devotional reading faithfully throughout this week, I think at the end of the week, you'll find many things in Psalm 23 that you never realized were there before. You never realized the depth of them. So starting tomorrow, read Psalm 23 10 times slowly and thoughtfully, out loud if possible. Now, you may want to read it at different times throughout the day. I suggest that instead of all at once. And when you're done, in your notebook, record your thoughts and impressions. What is a psalm about? What does it mean to you? Have you ever felt like the psalmist did? When? How did you react? Try to accomplish this in one day. Then on the next day after that, read Psalm 23 three times, slowly and thoughtfully. Then read verse 1 ten times. Think about each word in the verse, just like we were doing at the beginning there with the Lord is my shepherd. What does it mean? Why is it there? Is it past, present, or future? How does the verse relate to the rest of the chapter? What is that verse saying to you personally? Record your thoughts. And then after that, after that day, do uh, verse 2, and then verse 3, and verse 4, all the way, one verse each day. And there are six verses in the chapter, so that will take you to our next lesson time. And also, continue your daily reading program. As you work your way through reading the scripture, it's important to have that big overall view of scripture. And finally, again, on, there's a link in your notes uh, to a story called um, about a student and a fish and his professor. It's not directly related to Bible study, but it illustrates the inductive method. And it's a very good story to read. And as you're reading about the fish, think my Bible verse. And that's how you should be approaching your Bible verse or your Bible selection as you're reading it with the devotional method. So look it over, read it, enjoy yourself. I'd like to close with the number six uh, blessing. And then uh, we'll just end the session and we'll look forward to going over lesson four next week, same time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. God bless and we'll see you next week.